gives me great pleasure then to um, call up for an opening address our financial director, um, Andre Stein. Um, happy to hand over the mic. Apparently, he's prepared a good song for you. It's a good mic. <laughs> Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to ATI's annual Learner Awards. To celebrate your hard work and achievements. You know, every body of every one of you that qualifies as an artisan is a real achiever. Thank you to all our customers. You know, without you we wouldn't have been able to achieve our vision, which is proudly contributing to the development of artisans on this continent. Now, when you think of becoming an artisan, you know, I, I think of almost what Richard alluded to now. It's such a unique space that you guys are in. You're acquiring such unique skills. And, you know, over the years, it's become such a lost form of art, action. So, I would like to just touch on two topics that I think is quite relevant in our current context. <coughs> Firstly, as Richard mentioned, the machine age, the, indus the fourth industrial revolution. Now, does anyone actually know what this is, what it means? And, and no, it doesn't have anything to do with the upcoming elections. <laughs> so, let me just take you a step back. In the first industrial revolution, they used steam to mechanize production. In the second, they used electrical power to um, produce mass production. In the third, they used information technology. And, you know, we, we thought it couldn't get any better. And that was to automate all the, the production processes. What's the fourth industrial revolution actually is, is is best described as a blurring of the lines between the physical, the digital, and the biological spheres that we know. Examples such as artificial intelligence, uh, autonomous vehicles or self-driven vehicles, blockchain technology, um, things like the Internet of Things, which is really every appliance and device that's connected to the internet and delivering loads and loads of big data. Now all these things are becoming quite entrenched in our everyday lives. Things like 3D printing. Did you know that they can actually take a fragment of a hip and reprint an entire hip that they can use in hip replacement surgery? As I was driving in from uh, Lanseria, I noticed this billboard ad. It was BMW advertising one of their new BMs. And the caption there state, stated, the most human vehicle we have ever built. I mean, that just goes to show. Unfortunately, this fourth revolution will eliminate many of the jobs that we currently know. And will also pose a real threat to our privacy. However, many new skills will be required and jobs will be created, which is a good, good news for us. To give you some form of the scale of what we're talking about here, 90% of all the data today in the world was created within the last 24 months. 85%, well it's predicted that 85% of all customer interaction will be between robots or humans and robots. Seven, it took 75 years for the analog phone to reach 100 million users. Now for those of you that don't know what an analog phone is, go and Google it because I'm sure there's no none of them still lying around. It, it took Instagram two years to reach 100 million users. And it's taken Pokemon Go just one month to reach 100 million users. I mean, that's incredible. 
So why am I telling you all these things? Well, at ATI, we realized that we needed to embrace technology. So about two years ago, we started developing our own learner management system, um, which is basically a platform that learners can access their content. And we also started digitizing all our modules into video content. Uh, phase two of that will be to enrich and enhance the learner experience with the use of virtual reality and something called gamification. So the reasoning behind this, it's, it's twofold. Firstly, we wanted to create value add for, for our existing learner uh, learners on the system, on the system. And, and by, by doing so, we, we looked at how can we access or have them access an, on a long-term sort of uh, basis a relationship with ATI. So in other words, what we, would, what we would do is create new content and continually place this content onto the platform, giving them access for life. So even qualified artisans could access the platform and um, log their CPD hours if that's required from them. The second thing is that we've always felt that technical education should be more accessible and affordable. So we've invested or started investing in technical bridging courses. And hopefully this will also improve the, the outcomes of the pipeline that feed into our current um, courses. So what does that mean for you guys? You as, as artisans? Well, if you think about this digital world, a digital world needs a physical platform. It needs infrastructure, it needs power, and it needs technical people like you guys to design, build, and maintain it. Second topic, what's been a name? Have you ever thought about why things are called certain things? You know, where, where did they derive their name from? Where does your last name or first name come from? And what does it mean? The ancient ones didn't just merely throw a bunch of letters together to form new names. Every name had a literal meaning. For example, the first man, Adam. Adam means to be read and obviously from the dust he was formed. Last names. If we, if we look at last names, last names were linked to physical attributes of people. So you have Mr. Black, Mrs. White, Mr. Peacock, I'm not sure why. <laughs> Geographical um, landscapes, you know, bush, you think of woods, hill, lake, you know, loads of examples. As well as occupations, you know, have Mr. Baker, uh, Fisher, Smith. However, it does make you think where the name Lipschitz originated from. <laughs> Taking a look closer at home, at our South African names, <coughs> Jabulani means rejoice, Lerato means love, Mpo means gift, and of course Mandisa means sweet. As you do, if, if you're an only child like me, I used to speculate um, the origins of certain words. One of these words was a word that describes a sneeze. So when you, when you sneeze, it's, you know, that our tissue. I've always wondered where does this word come from? So there, there are a number of theories that um, describe its origin, but I'm going to give you mine. So when you think of the motion of a sneeze, you start from the top and you end at the bottom. So you go from a hat to a shoe. Hat tissue. Get it? Maybe it's that only child syndrome thing. So for all of you guys that are artisans or in the process of becoming artisans, have you ever thought about what's in that name? What does it mean? Now, it is a Latin word that is a Latin word that originates from called artitis. It sounds very um, gladiator-like, but um, it's actually quite, quite something. So, artitis means skilled or 
to instruct in the arts. I think it's such a beautiful description of, of what it is, artism. But I'm going to give you my breakdown. So when you take this word artism, you break it up in its two distinctive words, art and san. 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 San is a Japanese title which means respect. And it's a respect for the person that, you, that you're addressing. So some of you that remember Karate Kid, it's, you know, Daniel san wax on, wax off. So, when you look at the word art, art, the definition of art is the human creative skill and innovation. So, when you throw it all back together again, what do you get? As, as this fourth industrial revolution gains momentum and pace, and drags us all along with it. You guys are going to be the artists, the creators, and the sculptors of our futures. And, that, and for that, you deserve the title San Respect. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks very much, Andre. We always knew you were a bit of a machine.